Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. We made it to Friday. Run it back. FanDuel TV, Michelle Beadle, Lou Will, Diddy Green is here. Filling in for Chandler Parsons. Yeah. Thank goodness. Wait, Upgrade. Wait. Um, and, <laughs> of course, we've got Shams coming to us from Chicago. Shams, we talked about it yesterday. We're thinking, where's the video of the Isaiah Stewart situation? What's going to happen? And we finally got the scoop, Shams. What's the latest? We still don't have the video as of yet, but three game suspension handed down to Isaiah Stewart from the NBA. He served the first game last night in Indiana and the league's investigation showed that he, he initiated the altercation with, <laughs> with Drew Eubanks last week in Phoenix, uh, you know, pushed Drew Eubanks and also delivered a punch. I, I'm told he punched him in the face, in the mouth area uh, and, and Drew Eubanks took it. And, and there wasn't really much of an altercation after that incident, they were both separated security stopped them. So this is now the second time Isaiah Stewart's been suspended by the league. A couple years ago in 2021, it was the incident with LeBron James. He got two games. So now there's three game suspension for him and hopefully he moves forward with this. He did also have a misdemeanor assault charge uh, that the Phoenix Police Department uh, gave him. That has since been dropped. That case is over. So for everything for Isaiah Stewart is now moved, moved on. Um, his incident with Drew Eubanks is over with. He got the suspension. The case has also dropped now, so this just essentially this three-game suspension is going to cost him upwards of $100,000. Ooh, yikes. Okay, so here's the thing, I, which three games didn't seem like a lot, right? I know yesterday or whatever, you were talking about like 12 games possibly. Three seems mm, yeah. low to me. Very low. I mean, right? I think what saved him is the fact that the video has not leaked yet. Yeah. The, the Jordan Poole video leaked quicker than this. It, it It's kind of crazy. Um, but the fact that you don't actually see it is, is helping him. I thought... If a punch, usually guys get right? more games. Um, but because there's no evidence yet, um, which helps him, they gave him the suspension before the video came out. But, if, you know. I mean, they've seen something, but I mean, maybe yeah. they're waiting for us to see it and maybe, have yeah, outrage. Maybe it's, maybe it's not, a, not as big of a deal as it reads, as it, okay. as it, as it sounds. Um, but I, I agree with Danny. The punch. video the video is saving them because I, I said 12 games. You I did. felt like... I saw what Draymond Green did. If punches are being thrown, that sets the precedent. That sets the standard of how the NBA is going to react to this. And I was surprised that it was only three games because, you know, just as a former player, this this sends kind of a shocking... Oh, weird. This sends a shocking idea to other players. You know, if you have a problem with somebody and I can afford the $100,000 $100, problem, I'm going to smack the hell out of somebody in the back. And now you're opening the door for yeah. some energy that's that's never been there before. You know, we bluff a lot. Guys talk a lot of trash. But once the game is over, every once in a while it might spill over to the back. Sure. But other than that, you know, guys get over it. It's in the heat of the moment. It's competitive. With this, they were in street clothes. Mm -hmm. Nobody's revved up any, any, any at, at that point yet. I was a little confused why uh, he would even throw a punch at this guy. So I was I was a little confused with the three-game suspension. Yeah, I We've seen guys get suspended more for less. A lot, yeah. So I would expect I was expecting at least five games. Um, Something. At the very minimum. Um, is it because he's a piston out. and we don't care? Like, what is it? <laughs> I think just because the video evidence just is maybe, out there. It's the video. The evidence is out there. Yet. Seen it. So he said 12. I said, fair. to be fair, it should have been at least half to 12, maybe six. But three, he said he got off pretty lightly with this one. I will say this. I dislike quite a few people on the planet. But $100,000 to hit them, I don't know if it's worth it. It's not. It's really not. That's kind of a lot of money. <laughs> it's to never hit worth somebody. it. It's I'm, never worth it. I'm, I'm keeping my cash on that one. All right, we did have some games finally last night. And the first one, of course, was without LeBron, Lakers, Warriors. Warriors, no issues here. 128, 100. Curry had 32 and 8. Wiggins with 20 points. And AD with the 27 and 15. Uh, eight of their last 10 games for this Warriors team have been wins. And they're a half game behind the Lakers. So this was kind of a big one for them. Um, look, I I've seen a lot of notices on Twitter saying don't look now but this Warriors team might be figuring something out is it too late or is there enough time it's plenty of time especially when you have the play in in your favor um, I don't know if they can get down to that guaranteed seven but they'll be in that they'll be in that conversation in that play in and they're trending at the right time they're playing really good basketball going into the the tail end of this season trying to figure things out they'll get Chris Paul back we'll see what that looks like Clay Thompson mm -hmm. coming off the bench uh, that's been a roller coaster ride. We'll see what they look like. But so far, you know, they won 80% of their games in the last 10. Uh, trending up for me. 
Yeah, they got they got a lot of time, especially the way the West is stacked up. They're not that many games behind. No. Uh, those teams, said the Lakers and all the teams at the bottom part of the the, the playoff, uh, like from seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so they have enough to make it up. They have the guys, have the pieces. I think it's interesting with what they're doing with Clay. Um, I don't think it'll last long with him coming off the bench. Um, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully he figures that he had a good game, the first game off the bench. This second game um, wasn't as strong, but I don't know how, how well they continue that. That's what's that. funny about the whole Clay thing. It's like 35, the first one, he's like, okay, maybe yeah. this works. And mm -hmm. then he comes out and he has a dud. So it's like, <laughs> where's, that, where's that middle ground where this works for Clay and where this works for the Golden State Warriors? I think Warrior? CP will have a, a big impact on that. He'll help. If Clay continues to come off the bench and have CP with him, I think it'll help him adjust to that. So we'll, we'll see how that goes for them. But I said they're trending in the right direction. They definitely have a plenty of time. They have a lot of time. They have plenty of time to catch the other teams in front of them um, to make up for ground. Um, it's just that we'll see how you know they continue to, to. I guess their younger guys step up in the starting lineup. You it's know, Kaminga playing funny. great. Pazimski. If they figure this out and yeah. Steph is leading all these young, it's just it's going to be fun and funny to watch. And Steph told us he's still in his prime. He did have the 32, eight assists, six threes last night. He also had a pass um, from last night. Why don't we show you this pass? And you guys can tell me how many people can do this. <laughs> That's the pass. That was the pass. Yeah. Wait. Hold on. Do it again. And it's impressive. Whee! I think the one to KD in earlier years was probably oh. more impressive. How about this? No, nah, we don't need another angle. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean you don't need another? That one's fun. It's it, cool. It, it's a solid pass. It's a good pass. It's a solid pass. pass. I said the one to KD, fast break, full court. That one probably more impressive. This one was impressive, but I think there's a good amount of point guards that can make that pass. He doesn't even look to see what every happens after. Point he does guard. It's just so funny to me. <laughs> every point guard in the NBA can make that pass. Not every point guard. Every this, single this, point guard this, this, in the NBA can make that pass. It's like the Jalen Brown pass. dunk. Is this? It's an impressive pass. <laughs> No, First of all, it's impressive. No, no, no. He doesn't even look to Co see if it finished. Listen, cut Raz in my ear said, I'm hating. No, you are I'm hating. Just, I'm just telling you. Jalen Brunson can't make this pass. Shea Gilgis Alexander can't make this pass. Cole Anthony can't make this Trae pass. Young. Trae Young can't make Cole this Anthony. pass. Cole Anthony, how do we I'm not even here? thinking right now. Tyrese Luca Dunches can't make yeah. this pass. Tyrese Maxson can't make this pass. Tyrese Halliburton. Okay, Luca, Luca probably makes this pass. Everybody can make times. this pass. We like it. It's a it's really a good pass. Good pass. It's a hater. Pass. I, 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 it's a good pass. So but you're saying are, every other point guard can make this pass? The other point guards are good too. They're good. They're leap. I'd good like to guard. find one that can't. LeBron <laughs> James can't make this pass. What about Jordan Poole? Jordan Poole can. <laughs> okay, there we go. I got we're not you. Doing this. <laughs> not oh, we're as doing smoothly. it. We're doing we're, it, we're and we're continuing it. it. <laughs> Fine. You guys aren't impressed. The mere mortals amongst us, myself. Uh, we are very impressed by it. Steve Kerr mentioned pregame, however, and Shams. We're going to talk Chris Paul. Danny just brought it up, said when he returns, it could change the sort of dynamic that is going on with Clay coming off the bench. When can we expect Chris Paul back out there? Yeah, Steve Kerr said last night that he, they're trying to get a couple more practices in for Chris Paul, and the hope is that he's going to be back. They, they go on this four-game road trip next week at Washington on Tuesday. They played the Knicks on Thursday, Raptors on Friday, and then Boston next Sunday. So the hope is it's somewhere on that road trip Chris Paul's back, and that, that will change the rotation. That'll put one more ball handler for uh, the Warriors. And I think him, Klay Thompson, coming off that bench, that's going to be interesting to keep an eye on how that develops. Those two guys are going to play more with each other. Maybe that'll benefit Klay more, but I I'm with Lou in, in, you know, on this. Like, where's the middle ground for Klay Thompson? Mm. We know he wants to start. We know he can't be happy coming off the bench. So where does this lead Klay Thompson for the second half of the season? But right now... Uh, this group is obviously playing well. They're rolling. They've won nine of their last 11. And Chris Paul should be on the way back over the next week or so. Well, I guess I'm sort of stuck on the why wouldn't he be happy coming off the bench? If I mean, look, last night obviously is not the same as the first night. First night he looked awesome. Last night, not so much. That's the only way you'd be happy if you continue to look awesome. To look awesome. Yeah, so just look if, awesome. <laughs> yeah, if, but that's, Chris Paul can help with that. He can be, you know, the soothing factor into yeah. helping him adjust to being on the bench. But I just, as a starter, your whole career, and as a, you know, known as a, one of the greatest shooter to ever play this game, it's going to be tough, regard, and especially not playing in certain situations. Maybe they sometimes they have benched him in the fourth quarter. That's True. probably harder than anything. Um, but yeah, just having that longevity of a career. It's, it's a huge adjustment for anybody to go to the bench and, you know, especially behind the guy. When you're not winning, they weren't that good already. Right. They're winning fair. late. When you're not good already and you're playing behind guys, you're like, we're losing already. So now I'm being benched on a team that's, we're not 
But he seems to be self-aware, Clay Thompson, yeah. right? Well, no, he's not playing well, but it's like, who am I playing behind? Are these guys that so much better than me? So that's part of it. That and they should a, be starting. And it's a thin line. Like, we watched him last week when they announced that he was going to come off the bench. He took the high road. He was very yeah. professional, mm -hmm. very understanding. He was open-minded about it. Now, he'd get a few more of these three points, these fours, these mm -hmm. fives, maybe a mm -hmm. nine in here and there. We don't know what his attitude entails and so forth. A team, like we said, that's trending up, you don't want somebody unhappy, especially one of your main guys in Klay Thompson. Chris Paul coming back, you know, he's been out so long um, with, his, with his injuries. God, he has. The last time we saw Chris Paul, they were struggling. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so this is, something, this is something interesting to watch to see how he can build himself back in this lineup and be a positive impact that he's been throughout the course of his career. Um, and coming off that bench with Clay, like Danny said, this, this can give them that balance where you have one guy on the floor that's for sure looking for uh, Clay Thompson to get him wide open looks to make the game easier for him. It feels like this will be a good thing. I, I know it's easier for me to say than Clay to have we to hope. hear it, but yeah, it, it <laughs> feels hope. like this could be a nice spark. But um, we obviously didn't have LeBron in this one last night, Shams, and that was the 18 point loss there for the Lakers. When do we expect LeBron to be back in this lineup? Darvin Ham said last night that the expectation is, the likelihood is that LeBron James returns the lineup tonight of against course. San Antonio. <laughs> There's Spurs, Michelle, but he's 39 years old. He's played 21 seasons. This is his 21st season. He's obviously managing that ankle last year, second half of the season. He managed that torn tendon in his foot. This year, it seems to, to be this ankle issue that he's been managing, the soreness that he's had. Um, it it's, doesn't look like there's going to be any extended absence, but it's something that he's going to have to deal with and manage for the rest of the season. But the expectation is that potentially tonight, a return for LeBron James, uh, his first game since the All-Star Of course. I mean, he's 39 course. years old. Back to back's overrated anyway, you know? <laughs> yeah, but you just gotta pick which one you're gonna play in. <laughs> Dang it, it's that one. Um, there was a weird quote in this one. It's been a weird week for coach quotes, but Darvin Ham says that AD lost his voice and that affected <coughs> basically <coughs> Lakers' defensive communication <laughs> in the loss. I have never in all my years. Uh, Lou, how are we feeling about this one? Tag. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, DG. What this do you is think? an interesting one. Um, <laughs> I don't you know, get I, it. I never try to, to talk down on someone's <laughs> comments or post game interview. You just never know um, what their where their mind was at that time. No. Um, and I'm not saying this is like off the wall, but it's just it's kind of an interesting aspect to look at or to try to gauge or try to take an angle of why a defense was bad. <laughs> Huh. But yeah, if you're, your anchor of your defense is not able to communicate well the way you need him to, you know, Draymond's out there, he anchors a defense, he can talk a lot. You guys are like Pat Bev or Dylan Brooks. Um, but you could still communicate. I, I, yes, you could. Um, I don't know if AD's the guy that, he is great at talking on defense, but I don't know if he's the guy that's like ultimately talking that much. So, um, but him not be able to do that without Braun there, I think affects them, you know, a lot. Because he is one of their leaders, he's one of their vets. Um, See, I wasn't going to say anything you have close to, to that. So oh, wait, what were you going to say? I appreciate say? Danny's perspective. I, it's like, sometimes coaches, some things you just don't say. <laughs> you, just don't, you just don't say it because as a, as a casual fan on mm -hmm. the outside looking in, we don't know anything about... It sounds we, silly. Yeah, we don't know anything about how this affects defense. Sure, Danny and I may know that mm. this is a serious thing and, and he's the anchor behind everybody and he's directing traffic and quarterback and the defense, sure. But the casual fan, you saying this in a press conference, they don't, they don't understand it that. It looks like an excuse. And they don't care and it looks like an excuse. And so I think this was just better left unsaid. Because you're right, if a quarterback lost his voice completely, I do think that would be a problem. Absolutely. Right? I lost my voice last week. We had to cancel the show altogether. <laughs> this is because you're the quarterback. It's, th thank you. Um, but this just doesn't feel the same as those examples. It's, it's, it's funny. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I like it. Yeah, it's funny. I would have I yeah. just preferred he didn't say it. But I, it is some truth to it. Yes, because there are four other guys out there that can talk. Right. And you can still visually. Quarterback is the main guy yeah. talking. You know, in tennis, or you're, you're the, the host. So you're, the, I, you're the show, I hear basically. So yeah. You can't talk, and we have no show. You're the show. But if you have four other guys that are the show, you should be able to Somebody continue a show. Somebody should be able to continue. Somebody yeah. should. And you kind of know what you're supposed to do and point and do all that. But it's okay. 
it was a loss. They have another chance tonight to get a win. Hopefully they don't. Uh, but Clippers Thunder was another game last night. And OKC, okay, Chandler got all of these right, Lou, by the way. He's not here to brag about it. But he's doing well. But he did. <laughs> he's doing well. Here it is, 129-107. SGA with 31-8-4. and 4. Chet, 17-10. He had three blocks. Kawhi had 20. Harden had 17. Um, this, was, this was a pretty they dominant win. They a Joe. They're 22 and six at home, by the way, OKC. So I get that they're young and we may not have them going all the way this season, but having home court advantage in the playoffs for this kind of a team is how big a deal? It's gonna be everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be everything, especially with a young, inexperienced playoff team, right? For them to have an opportunity to start at home, start in hmm. um, an environment that they're very comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're successful at home. They play well at home, but those things are, are, are monumental when you can sit at home for an extra seven to eight days um, and prepare for a team, have an opportunity to go up 2-1 before you go out on the road because this is going to be a tough playoff run for everybody. You know, if you're the Minnesota Timberwolves, you may get rewarded with a Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving in the first <laughs> round. Oh, man. It's not going to be a sweet lick for anybody. So for this young team to have an opportunity to start at home, start in their building that they're 22-6 and six, um, so far, this is going to be everything for them. It's huge. It's impressive. Like, like, I agree with Lou. I mean... I don't know if you remember how great the fan base was in OKC when they were a playoff team. Um, but, you know, most arenas that give you plus three or so with your fans behind you, in that arena with those fans, said it's been so long, it's been a while for them mm -hmm. in the playoffs. I could see them having, you know, plus five, you know, at least plus six. Their fan base is unbelievable there. And I remember playing it in my Spurs days. Um, they had an unbelievable crowd. So they have that crowd behind them. It'll help them get through those inexperienced moments or those moments where, you know, they lose their poise. Right. In the playoffs, the game slows down a little bit. When you're on the road, it's harder to gather yourself. When you're at home, you have more games at home. It's easier to gather yourself and kind of get an edge on collecting yourself, get, playing against those top teams like a Dallas or like a fun. New Orleans, or, or you know, who, who knows they're going to match up Very in the cool. first round. Fast forward to the playoffs. Shams, look, they, they didn't do anything at the deadline. And, and this was an argument that we were having about OKC is in a good place. Don't screw up any of the chemistry that you have going on right now. Does it still seem as though in-house they are very content with where they are as a team and just let this marinate? They got Gordon Hayward, and I think he, he, he made his debut last night. He hasn't played in a while off a of calf injury. That was their kind of major deadline move. They, they got rid of a few contracts, Bertans, Trey Mann uh, among them. And you bring in a guy like Gordon Hayward, he can at least be a veteran player that if there's a guy that's dealing with foul trouble, any issues come playoff time, you put in Gordon Hayward. But when you think about what they have going into the summer and in future years, they got 10 plus first round picks they can trade. They got a boatload of second round picks. They got a bunch of swaps that they can trade. When you think about draft assets. But Michelle, another thing that they opened up that people don't talk about this summer is $30 million of cap space. So when you think about the cap space teams this upcoming summer, we know about Detroit. They've got you know, potentially 50, 60 million. But Oklahoma City is going to have $30 million in cap space to use. And I think when, you, when, you're, when you're the, the, the Thunder, you want to see how this team looks. You're kind of playing with house money right now and seeing this group. Three players on this roster have had real playoff minutes. That's Shea Gills Alexander, Lou Dort, and Isaiah Joe. Those are the three guys that have played, uh, you know, any type of playoff moments. And so you want to see what you truly have uh, on this roster. Today they also waived uh, Alexei Pokashevsky. He, he was a guy that they drafted 17th overall. That opens up a roster spot they could use potentially for a veteran player or anything they have uh, need-wise over the next month. And a half. Man, if you're looking for an NBA team to root for, you've never had one, this, you might want to jump on this. They got everything, man. Yeah. They're, holding, they're holding all the cars. They're holding the Royal Flush right now in, in their back pocket. And they, they, have, they can do whatever they want with it. All that money and picks, all those picks. First round, second round picks, yeah. money in the summertime. And look, they might have something that we've never heard from OKC ever before. They might actually get a free agent. Somebody to <laughs> voluntarily, yeah. somebody to voluntarily come yeah. there. If you're watching, if you're watching and, and you're a fan of the game, you're seeing how they're building, how this team is playing, and they're young, and, and they have a window to be, to be on top of the mountain for a four to five year window. If you're a free agent and you're looking for somewhere to land where you can call home and, and give yourself an opportunity for some championship runs, this can quite possibly be a destination. How hard is that if you're a free agent? Because OKC, no offense to anyone, but it's never been a place where people are like, mm -hmm. that's that's where I need to end up. Are you, as a free agent, already thinking this, or is this something an agent would need to come to you and be like, just put this in your mind and think about it? it if you're a balanced. basketball, yeah, if you're a basketball fan, it's both. Yeah, you're seeing the games, you're seeing how teams play, no matter how. Even like Orlando, they have been bad, you know, in previous years, but because they're playing better basketball, they're playing at a certain pace, or they're playing your style of play. Like, 
I like what they got going. They're building something great over there. OKC for sure. Minnesota said so they have been tough, uh, some tough years <laughs> in the past. They've been pretty rough in the last couple of years. But this year, you've seen what they're building. Those are now becoming destinations. Because they're winning, they're becoming des Nobody thought, thought like, no. a couple years ago thought, like, oh, I want to go to Memphis. They get Ja, they get Dez, they get Jaron. They got a couple pieces. If you're winning, we you're going to go there because you want to win. Them. You have a chance. Memphis is a, it's a tough, you know, place to Memphis live. Memphis hates the show. I, I'm not the sure. The city I, hates I've heard, the show. I've heard. Well, they hate Chandler more than anything, <laughs> yeah. truth be told. They have a great wins. fan base, but if you're winning games, those cities that you don't really like going to, right. you will be open to, to playing for. It's interesting to me. It's like it's kind of a cool thing to, to watch happen. The other, other side of that is the Clippers, and they were a little slow last night, so... You know, first game after the All-Star break, some older dudes. I'm not gonna say old. Uh, is it is it that tough to sort of shake the rust off? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb and pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. This this first game back, PG and Kawhi were in the All-Star game. I for sure know they probably went. I don't know for sure. This is an, <laughs> this is an opinion. Like they it. went into this game cold turkey. Okay. They might have got some shots at shoot around, mm -hmm. but they took an extended break. And they came into this thing cold turkey. You you see two different dynamics of teams when you come back from the All Star break. You see young teams oh. who are trying to prove something. Um, so they're in the gym throughout the weekend. Mm -hmm. They're getting ready to go. They're also and, fresh. And they're fresh. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> and then you see veteran guys who take full advantage when they break. They break. They need a little WD forty to yeah. get that take, going again. Yeah, and, and so it's gonna take a a couple more days for them to get back in the groove of things. And so I think. I think this was the perfect storm. You saw some young guys I who like were it. at home, ready to, uh, well, who were who were ready to play, and you saw a Clipper team that was still kind of getting themselves back in the groove. Just takes a little sure. bit longer. Yeah, for sure. After All Star break, you got to give the edge to the young guys. The younger okay, team. fair. You got to give the edge to the young. For guys. now, um, Suns Mavs, another good one last night. Mavericks seventh straight win for this Dallas team. Luca, 123, 113. He had 41. 9, 11, and 4 steals. Kyrie with 29, 5, and 3. Uh, there was no Bradley Beal in this one. Booker with 35. KD, 23, and 5. Luka, um, just, it, it's just Luka doing Luka. He's averaging a league leading 34 a game, 9 rebounds, 9.5 assists. If, if they can get Dallas to be in that sort of top three range, do we seriously talk about him as an MVP candidate? 100%. Absolutely. No doubt. Yeah. If, I mean, it's a, it, you know, we'll see. I mean, we're talking about we're Sh talking Shea, about right? Now. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about him now. But <laughs> you don't talk about him now. Yeah, because I, I I think Shea is having having an incredible season. I yeah. think he's he's very much deserving of the attention that he wants. Um, Jokic is there. You know, you have guys that are there. If MB wasn't hurt, he'd still be in that conversation. So it's not a slight to Luka. I just think there are guys that are, that when you when you can't go with the numbers, you go to the next best thing, which is the wins. Yeah. Huh. And then you have guys that are having more success in that area. Yeah. So if, she, if OKC ends up in the top two, I, I like Shea for it. It's kind of crazy. Especially if he's number one. For a team that wasn't in the playoffs last year or didn't make the playoffs previous year, to take a team like that to, to be a number one seed is very impressive. And you I love it. Get, you, you know, it's the year of the young guys, you know? So I know but D. Rose again, was the youngest MVP before. I don't know what Shea's age is now. 25? I think he'll be in that conversation. Yeah. So. He's in it somewhere in there. He's deserving of it. But yeah, if Luka gets to the, the third seed, the numbers he puts, I think we're kind of taking for granted what him and Jokic does. Like, in a night, they do it we so easily, do. so effortlessly. It's unbelievable the, the numbers they put up. It's v video game-like, and we're just like, oh, you know, it's another day at the office for Luka. They're best and friends. Like said, somebody else does it, you're like, oh, we're, man. We're getting ready to see some of the best basketball we've seen in quite a long time. Even though the All-Star weekend was was a little lowly and it was a little <laughs> dull, <laughs> nice I think it. the NBA playoffs to are, are going to make up for it. Again, if you're the Minnesota Timberwolves and you're having one of the best seasons in a long, long time, you get rewarded with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. Not right. Or quite possibly a LeBron and AD or Steph Curry and co. <laughs> like, these, those aren't rewards. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you got to start seeing some of these teams play chess That's a little a bit and try, to find a, and try to find some matchups that work for them. And so, Luka is very much deserving to be in that conversation, but I, I think this is, at this point, I think it's SGA's MVP to lose. That's, I think that's just awesome that we could possibly have that happen. So yesterday, AI, remember we talked about 
him saying that Kyrie has the best handles. He's also got a not bad finish ability. I almost feel bad showing this to you guys. Can you be like, eh, it's not that great. Everyone can do that. <laughs> do no, we, is not it, everybody is can this do better? That. Not, not everybody yeah, can not do everybody Does this do impress you? Especially yeah. with the offhand with the left. Yeah, this is this Michelle is Beto, tough. can you throw a behind the back Ooh, pass? I Probably. thought it was, a, it was right. <laughs> but I'm, a, I'm an exceptional <laughs> athlete. All right. But there you go. <laughs> no, there so, you go. <laughs> I really looked at this and thought this was his left hand. That's how much a magician Kai is with the ball. He, like, you finish with the right hand on the left side. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, you're I right. I thought it was, it was his, his left, left hand. hand this whole it is his right so hand. So not everybody can do this. To put that type of spin on the ball on that side of the floor, yeah. Yeah, from that angle, it doesn't, you don't see it as he, much. He's deceptively athletic, man. That hang time is no, like, to hang in the air that long, it's not easy to do. Most people you know travel. What? Kyrie is a, <laughs> a lot of people like to talk about his handle. I like to talk about him as a finisher. Yeah. I think he's, I think he's one of the top finishers in the league and of all time. You in know, the history of the game. When I start thinking about finishers, I'm thinking about guys like, Shaq, mm -hmm. and obviously oh, wow. he was dominant, so you couldn't really stop Shaq once he got four feet from the rim. I'm thinking about MJ's finishing. I'm thinking about t max finishing. I'm thinking about Vince Carter because guys just got out of the way when Vince was coming yeah. down the lane. <laughs> He's the only point guard I can really think of off the top of my head that's an elite, that can, that's an elite finisher around the rim that's not 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, yeah. Yeah, that is actually kind of fun to watch. Taking a quick break right now. Shams, we will talk to you um, Monday, bright and early. When we come back, we will be joined by Kenny Beach. And look, he's already ready. Yeah, yeah. Boom! <laughs> run it back, the turds. Run it back, yeah. Run it up. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up. He is back, Kenny Beecham, co-founder of Enjoy Basketball, host of the Kenny Beecham podcast with the background that I'm obsessed with. And look, I know it's Friday, but this is our first time getting to catch up with you, Kenny. And, and we've talked a lot about the All-Star Weekend. It's something we're trying to put behind us, but not until we get your, your opinion quickly on it. Did you love it? Because we're just trying to find the one person that did. No, no, I didn't. Um, <laughs> I, I'm completely okay with getting rid of talking about it. it it's been a week. We, ba we got basketball <laughs> back, you. you know. Um, it wasn't a great Thank time. God. I'm be honest with you. I, I enjoyed the Sabrina versus Steph Curry. That was the highlight of the weekend for me. But the game, the dunk contest, everything else wasn't very good. Cancel it for three years. Am I right? <laughs> Is that not the best idea that we've had? I, I, don't, for, think for you, I don't think you cancel it. Three? But, yeah. but the, the Steph and Sabrina thing, that gave us a, that was a bright spot, then right? Then just so, do that. I would even enjoy seeing if Kaitlyn Clark comes out. I would like to see Kaitlyn Clark in it. Bring Sabrina yeah. back, a uh, Kelsey Plum. Definitely more. And, yeah, put more the women. In, yeah, put the women inside it and let them all shoot. Put four guys, four women. Best shooter wins. So Kenny, what do you think yeah. we can add Love or that. change to make this a better weekend? What do you think about a two-on-two -two tournament? Who and who do you think would be the best duo? Who could put the be together the Ooh. best duo in the NBA? Ooh. So I, I I got a chance to talk to uh, Tatum about like improving the the All Star Weekend, and the two on two tournament is very interesting. The the reason he didn't like that idea is because some teams are gonna have like two guards, some teams that have two forwards. Like if you get Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum together to go against um, a team like Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland, like the size is gonna win all. I like the idea of an individual one on one tournament, three dribbles, and let the best hooper come out on top. Um, guards, wings, uh, centers, three champions, and I think the fans will love it. I like this idea. I just think it'll take all night. <laughs> yeah. And but that's okay. Calls, calls. What else are we doing with it? Talk. Yeah, you got to put a dribble limit on it. You got to give them a shot clock, everything. Okay, we, but we're going to be in there all I night. I don't mind if it takes all night, because think about how many hours we gave up this past weekend as consumers. Between, <laughs> if you watch the celebrity game, uh, skills game, the, the the teams, all of that stuff. We gave hours of our lives. Yeah. If it's a better product, I don't mind. It would be more entertaining. Yeah, it would sure. be, be much more entertaining. Um, well, Danny, well, on the other hand, can somehow. Can I say something real quick? Wow, God. I don't, know if, I don't know if we get entertained. We're having a hard time for them playing hard in the All-Star game. You think they're going to yeah, play hard in two, two on two? I cancel it. We're back to canceling. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> like, is that what you just I, don't, I just don't know. That? The dunk contest, um, Dan <laughs> Danny was shocked that Jalen Brown made it to the finals, and so was everyone else. And I get that yeah. they, they sort of wanted the star to make it through, but Mac McClung took it seriously, as he did last year as well, and he won as a result. But again, is it broken? It is uh, Jacob Toppin had a crazy dunk that didn't get a great score. I think he should have been in the final. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he would have had Mr. some Hillman. some better dunks than, <laughs> than, than Jalen Brown. Uh, but I look, look, there are two players in the NBA that I think can help resolve the dunk contest. Oh, it's the Thompson twins. 
Those dudes have a crazy mm-hmm. amount of bounce. Mm-hmm. And when they were in overtime elite, they did a dunk contest and they tore the, the ceiling off uh, of the house. We just need them to commit to it in year number two, and I think that can save. Now, against each other, or do they form a super team? Ooh. No, the last time we did dunk contest teams, it was awful. I remember it was John Wall. It was was bad. So let's let them go against each other. The sibling rivalry will have them take it to the next level. Well, we got to get guys like Ja, Zion. Ja has to do it. We have to get those guys in the the event to to change. We need some guys to take it. There's there's four, There's four right there. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm his PR great. person, he's already signed up. Jaw's already signed up. The problem is we just want to see more of the guys we want to see yeah. in all of these competitions. Which is okay. Simple enough. Kenny, a lot of people have been <laughs> uttering some things about the past of how certain people have ruined the dunk contest. For example, LeBron James. The people have been talking mm-hmm. about LeBron and how he's ruined it. Uh, you know, a couple of people, I know, was it... KG, maybe Shaq, Charles. I don't know who else had mentioned it. Um, what do you think about that? What is, what is your take on it? Do you think LeBron is a, a part of the reason, full fault. reason, or was he the main reason why the dunk contest is the way it is? Nah, I mean, he definitely played a part, right? LeBron is like this, the model NBA player, especially for a superstar. Um, I think a lot of players don't really like the idea of maybe getting embarrassed. And, and Jalen Brown's very candid about it. So he'll do it again, even though he got mean to them. <laughs> um, I, I think some of the younger people, like the John ja Morants, the Zion Williamses, they're looking at Bron and say, well, Bron is one of the most ferocious dunkers we've ever really seen, and he's never done it, so maybe I shouldn't either. So LeBron plays a little part of it, but I can't put all of the blame on LeBron. I know where the blame could go, I thought go, that Luke. was a wild take to put this on LeBron. Yeah. Sure. For, <laughs> I just it's a stretch. Little, it is. Yeah. Even as a LeBron hater, it's a stretch. I understand where this stems from, <laughs> but it, it's, it's a real stretch to go back that far. It's like a 10-year-old thing, yeah. though. Like, yeah. this, was, this is it's way past He's 39 gone. years old now. Like, yeah. what, what do you right. think? Way past gone. By do the you, way, there is, some, there is someone to blame for the dunk contest this year. This year. Uh, well, OK. <laughs> Speaking of, do you think Jalen Brown should have made the finals? <laughs> No, no, he should. <laughs> Does Jalen no, Brown should. think Jalen Brown should have made the finals? He, doing the the D Brown cover <laughs> your face after the ball was <laughs> in the basket already is crazy. It's pretty um, amazing. I, I don't know how we can get that to the finals. I, I just don't. Kai <laughs> Sinet is shorter than I am. Oh my and he, god! And we were like. Let's sit him in the chair first before we dunk over. <laughs> I know. We saw Shaq get dumped over. We saw Taco Fall get dunked over before, but the five three guy got to sit in the chair. <laughs> so, so what do we think? So obviously part. we have an issue with the judging, but what do you think about the judging? Matt McClung did a dunk that we we all never seen before. Mr. Yeah. Hillman gave him a, a, a kind Mr. 46. Hillman. And yeah. uh, the, it was just all over the place. They were docking points for guys missing the first dunk, even though the second attempts were still amazing. What what do we do about the the judging? Do we do we I have current players judge or we get robots to what, judge what it? What do we do? We, <laughs> we get current players or go completely in on it being an entertainment thing. Get some celebrities, get some social media personalities. I'm available if they want me. There you you know what I'm saying? Um, but no, I think that we, we we cry all day about seeing the same dunks. This, there's no innovation, and when a guy drops the ball <laughs> mid air and catches it back and gets a 46, I don't know how we get better than that. So I think that we should just go all in on entertainment, go get some of the top celebrities in the world and say, have fun. I will go to my grave telling you that I think that the bobble thing was viewed by some of the judges as either a mistake or they didn't even see it. Like one Mm -hmm. or the other, and that's why the score was low. Because there's no way watching it on TV where you get to see it perfectly and then it didn't correlate with the, the numbers. I, I'm telling you, I don't think they saw it right. Mm. It was so fast. Mr. Hillman. Mr. Hillman. <laughs> we were being respectful to Mr. Hillman, by the way. Uh, we had Vince Carter on a couple days ago, Kenny, and he was telling us how back in the day, the league came to him, T-Mac, um, Kobe, and LeBron, and there was a million-dollar pot that was being offered for them to all do the slam dunk contest. They didn't, obviously. Who would have won that? I got to go with Vince Carter. Yeah. Uh, okay, he, thank he's you. He's the best dunker <laughs> I've ever seen in my lifetime. Uh, shout out Cole because he he was in it before. I, I got a lot of love for the players that actually do it, but there's it, there's no beat of Vince Carter. It's just yeah. not. I, I don't I don't care what players you put it in history in a contest. I'm taking Vince Carter. Kenny, I was gonna change my opinion about you if you said anything <laughs> different. Nope. He knew he wasn't. He I, I like your listen. I like your opinions. You're a really smart guy. You understand basketball a lot. If you said Appreciate anybody that. besides Vince <laughs> yeah. Carter right there, nope. I'd have had to look at you out <laughs> my side eye. Have to go back no, no. To all his he other knows. Opinions. Kenny, don't go anywhere. We're gonna take a quick break. We come back. We got more with Kenny Beecham. Um, 
Don't worry, we'll get past the all-star break, I promise. Cool, cool. <laughs> we'll run it back returns. The run it back, yeah. run it up. We are back with Kenny Beecham, and uh, there's so many quotes, by the way. Kenny, I'm so glad you're on today because we it's it's been just a treasure chest of amazing words. But LeBron <laughs> recently said uh, he's 50-50 on doing a retirement tour, um, or you know, does he go out like Kobe? Does he go out like Tim Duncan? Please, is there we a shot? We know LeBron. Thank you. We know LeBron. <laughs> we know he wants the farewell tour. He deserves the farewell tour, in my opinion. Um, when he does it, because there's no 50-50, it's 100% farewell tour, I will be here in the United Center when he's back in Chicago. No matter the price, <laughs> I'm there, because I need to see the last game at the UC. But it is, there's no 50-50. We know no this. Now, do you think he retires or finishes up as a Laker, or is there going to be some sort of trickery at the end here? I, I'm still, if I had to put my chips on it, I'm still saying he'll be a Laker. I think that the pressure is going to be on this offseason with the three first round picks that they have to go get some more talent to really compete. Um, but from Rich Paul, from Braun, he wants to end his career here, and I think that's true. What if they don't get Bronny? If they're not getting Bronny. I don't, I don't know what's real in that. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I know, I, we know he wants are. to play with Bronny, so that, that's the only way yeah. he leaves. Bronny's right? Bronny stats are more. not NBA ready. No, but the, the, a lot of people's stats weren't at the time when they were drafted, but disaster. you can get drafted mm -hmm. without NBA stats. So. Yeah, that's uh, true. Peyton Watson averaged like four points per game at UCLA, and now he's a, a critical rotational piece there for the Denver Nuggets right now. So, Shut up, I, I don't, I'm not looking the at the basketball rain man right here. Like, <laughs> the basketball <laughs> rain man, he got the stats for you. I don't even out. know who he's talking about. I don't even <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Fine, fair enough. But yeah, it's going to be a weird PR circus. And back to LeBron, speaking of his retiring as a Laker this season, the odds are that him, the Lakers, and the Golden State Warriors are not likely to make the playoffs this year. Do you see both of them missing? What are, what are your odds of seeing at least one of those teams making it or both of them missing? One of those teams will make it, and I think the team will be the Warriors. Okay, so you don't think the, the Warriors... Are gonna make it? Interesting. I, I think there's a world where both of them make it, but if I had to bet one way or another, I'm going Warriors. I think they have the easier schedule going forward. I think they've looked the better, looked best over the, the last month or so. Um, Dre, my green coming back, surprise, surprise, <laughs> matters a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I know you guys talked about Klay Thompson moving to the bench and how he struggled, but they have a lot of people that are really stepping up right now. Steph Curry's playing some of his best basketball of his career, which is crazy to say because he's a unanimous MVP. I think they have a better chance, but the Lakers still do have AD and LeBron too. And we saw it in the end season tournament, one game elimination type situation. It's hard to take that team out. Well, you know what, since we're on the Warriors thing and you mentioned Klay real quick, were you... Were you surprised by this move? Do you think they stick with it for the remaining 20-something games? I was definitely surprised, just given the pedigree of Klay Thompson. I mean, he's been around for a decade. He's been an all-star multiple, multiple times. I thought the timing was right, though. Um, Brandon Pajemski has been playing his best basketball of his young career. And because we haven't seen Klay Thompson do enough to warrant him getting back in the starting lineup, I think mm. we stick here. And he's going to have a few games, whether it be during an uh, uh, end-of-the-season run or something where... He looks amazing. I mean, his first game coming off the bench was one of his best games of his season so far. So I think it sticks, and I don't know how he'll feel about it because he's on the last year of his deal and he <laughs> wants to get paid, but we'll see. I know. He's, I wonder if he's regretting that. I don't think it that, sticks. Turning down the two-year extension situation right about now. He's got to be regretting it a little bit, right? Uh, maybe. I, I just don't think it sticks. I, I think that he's going to play well enough to get back in the starting lineup, and I think he'll deserve I mean, to get I hope started. so. I think we're all rooting for that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, sure. so I'm not going to torture you by reliving all of the Doc Rivers quotes that we got um, <laughs> over the course of last weekend. <laughs> but given what they have looked like and the way that the transition occurred with the coaching and all of that, does it feel like he's maybe doing a little too much? Yeah, but I, I'm not in a position to have a real opinion about this, right? When, when JJ goes on and he talks about it, or, or Danny or Lou, when you guys talk about it, I respect that opinion because you guys have been there. You guys have played under Doc, right? Both of you guys have played under Doc before, correct? Yes, that's yeah. correct. <clears throat> so so you, your opinion weighs a lot more than mine. All I can do is watch the interviews and kind of take away and say, hey, I can see that there might be a lack of accountability, but I don't know Doc as a person to say that that's who he is. Yeah, my opinion was, I, I think some of the, it, it's a few. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many now. I, I think some were said in jest, and obviously 
when you don't have the context of video or audio and you're just looking at a quote, some of these things can come off the wrong way. But knowing Doc, he's saying some of these things in jest, and they can come off the wrong way if they're not put in the right context. <laughs> same, same. I think a lot of the things that people found, especially on Twitter and social media, it's all from past interviews. When he sat down with KG and, and Paul Pierce, they're just asking him questions. Now they're pulling those things out as if he's blaming people. He's just talking about conversations that he's had with people and not necessarily blaming anybody. Um, but said so JJ had his take, you know, mm -hmm. Kendrick had his take. Man. Austin chimed in. I, I'm just sitting back and watching. And I Popcorn. keep my comments to myself and, you know, watch the show. And I told, I told Danny uh, off camera today, your relationship with Doc is one, or, one thing or other. Either it's hot or it's cold. Either you really love him or you really hate him as a former player. There's no gray area. I'm one of the guys that love him. I had my best years at the end of my career with Doc. It's hard for me to say anything negative about him. Um, we've had our ups and downs. We've had our disagreements. Sure. But through and through, he's one of the better coaches that I've had in my career. And that, that is Definitely. fair. Uh, Luca and the Joker, the bromance mm -hmm. that keeps on giving. It <laughs> seemed, look, they may not care about the game itself, but the actual weekend, they, nobody had more fun than these two did. If they were to team up and the, and the league allowed us this treasure, would it be the greatest duo of all time? The greatest of all time? Of all time. Shaq, Kobe. I'm just trying, I'm trying to make That's a like, viral game. moment. Magic career. <laughs> That's tough. Bro, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no just based on, yeah, Shaq, Kobe exists. Okay, fine, in the league then. Pim, MJ, MJ. <laughs> yeah. I, I, if they were teaming up right now, I would say that's the best duo in current basketball, but Fine. all time is kind of a stretch. Both of those players are MVP caliber players year in, year out, but all time, I, I, I can't get there. I like Katie and Russ. If the average, numbers are averaging now together, then they could be. That's what I'm saying. The <laughs> if they, numbers. If, if Luka's numbers stay the same and Jokic's numbers stay the same and they're on the same team, then they possibly could be the best duo of all time. It seems shocking to say, given the names you guys are mentioning, but. It's one basketball. So one of those guys just got to turn into an absolute score and one has to turn into a pass. So they're not going to average 23, 24 assists between the two of them. Yeah, and you don't want one to sort of give up the other. Yeah, but it'd be fun to watch. Um, Sounds fun, though. Yesterday, we had sort of a conversation about teams that legitimately have a shot at the title, and there was some disagreement. How many teams right now do you believe have Ooh. a real shot at winning this year? So out east, I got the Boston Celtics as the heavy favorite. If the Celtics aren't in the finals this year, something went really wrong, if you ask me. <laughs> I think that the Bucks still have a chance. I'm giving them another month under Doc before I change that opinion. Um, that's kind of it out east. No disrespect to the Knicks or the Cavs who play really good basketball. Out west, I still had Denver. Um, I still have the Clippers, even though they lost last night to OKC. Um, I think the Suns are going to be a tougher team to eliminate. They're not on the same tier as the first two teams I mentioned. They're, they're probably four teams out west and two teams out east that I have confidence could win a championship. Six total. So that's, yeah, that's yeah. six total. And he's leaving out the top two teams in the West. I think, and that opinion is because I think they're still youthful, still very inexperienced when it comes to wins in the playoffs and playoff runs. And But those teams are dead serious. I think we got to start mm -hmm. factoring them in. Yeah, yeah the, the reason I didn't put the Timberwolves in there, um, it's not really on their youth, honestly. It's like fourth quarter offense, late games get kind of <laughs> uh, stagnant for them. <laughs> And I, I worry about that in the playoff series against some of the top teams. And then for OKC, it's really just the youth. They have every other thing to tell me they're a contender, but the fact that their average age is like 23 and a half makes me God. think that they just they need some some playoff experience before they go on that championship run. That's it is funny. They're very different teams as far as I think why people have the expectations they do. Um, I don't know if it's disrespectful towards Minnesota. I've seen more and more. Timberwolves fans on the old internet getting a little bit riled up as we get closer. Go is... ahead. I, I'll leave it alone. What? No. <laughs> yesterday I, I said the pressure was on Chris Finch. You did. The second half of the season. He has to coach. He has to he has to make sure that we understand that that team is real. And so for Kenny to say, you know, fourth quarter execution is a problem for him, that's a coaching thing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so for them to be, like, if they're going to finish the season third place, I think this is a this is a bad run. You know, you're 50 some, you're 55 games in. You're number one. You've been number one, and if you surrender that, I think that's going to be a, but that's going to be. But one through four is all. S it like is by half a game, right? Yeah, absolutely. So a game or two, so they could easily drop quickly. But in the playoffs, they do have to at least get out of the first round. Yeah, these final weeks are going to be very, very interesting. This can be a good or bad, but what has been the biggest surprise to you so far this season, team-wise? 
Um, it might just be the OKC Thunder to go from a play-in team to like one seed. And it's not like they made any significant moves. They didn't go get a superstar. They got a, a second year rookie in Chet Holmgren. And then we see Jalen Williams every month of his NBA career so far, his numbers have got better and better and better where he's getting to the point where you can argue him being a top 40-ish player in basketball. So that's my biggest surprise. We knew that Shea had this. Um, he, he did a lot of it last season, but now he's got the pieces around them. I think that coach Mark Dayton all has felt comfortable enough to say like, I know we use the top pick on Josh Giddy but Isaiah Joe is playing better basketball right now. So he's going to close out this game or we're going to see Gordon Hayward probably get some opportunities to close out games. So I think they're well coached. And again, with them being like the third youngest team in basketball, it makes no sense for them to be as high as they are in the standards. I agree. I mean, nobody saw this coming at the beginning fun. of the year. OKC being number one, you would think some of you would if somebody told you that, you would think they're on heavy drugs. <laughs> Shea has been <laughs> Shea drug. has been my favorite for MVP for quite a, quite a while now, so I'm not as surprised. I, I had the opportunity to play with him, so I knew what he brought to the table. It's, it's just fun to see it come to fruition. I mean, look, this was the long game OKC has been playing, and now it's starting to, to do what they wanted it to do this entire time. It's kind of the process, as they say, has, is, is working. Kenny? Love having you on. Appreciate the time, sir. We will talk to you soon. And uh, we will take a break when we come back and wrap things up. Lou will. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. Get in on all NBA buzzer beater, ankle breakers, and tomahawk jams with FanDuel. America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. The app is easy to use and there are so many different ways to bet. Live game, same game parlays. Find bets in a new explore tab. Make a parlay in a parlay hub. The best way to find popular parlays and more. So download the app and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NBA. Mm -hmm. Danny, I gotta ask you before we go, man. Uh, the Wizards are taking a turn, benching Jordan Poole. Is this a surprising move to you? They fired their coach, they're making some changes. I think they're trying to spice some things up. Um, it is surprising because of a guy like that who is still a good caliber player to be on a team like that. If you're one of the worst teams in the league to be benched, maybe it's something disciplinary. Uh, maybe they're trying to make a punishment. Maybe they're trying to light a fire in them. Um, obviously he's had a tough year, um, but it is shocking, especially at this point in the season when they're not really playing for much. And then, I guess in another word, and I guess in another angle, it kind of isn't shocking. If you're trying to play younger guys or if you're just trying to get a higher pick, so quote-unquote tanking, um, I wouldn't be surprised they you know, bench other guys as well. Yeah, this feels like an accountability thing, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when you got young guys on your team that are, that are considered stars for you, um, heavily invested in Jordan Poole. Mm -hmm. Maybe there are some disciplinary things going on behind the scenes that we're, we're not really privy about. Would you say that his, his contract is one of the... I, I hate to count somebody's yeah. money, but... I think that money was earned, you know. For sure, 100%. Four, four years for 128, I think that money was earned, but has he has he done enough to sustain the level of, of trust for, for that uh, organization? Not yet, not yet. And um, I wouldn't say it's one of the worst contracts in the league. I never want to speak on somebody's contract and say it's one of the worst. He earned it, he played very well, especially at a great organization. Helped them win a championship over there in Golden State. Without him, they don't win. Um, so he's definitely earned his contract. Uh, right now, it, it, he's struggling. Um, he still has three more years under that contract. He hasn't done enough to sustain or to prove to that organization that he should be the guy. But I, I think he'll you know, look at himself in the mirror this summer, go back to you know, where he started from, and come back and having a better year. The, to, still doesn't say he'll be an all-star, but I think he'll be a lot better next year coming into that, that organization. Yeah, I, I think they're trying to get rid of plays like this um, that we're going to show here. Just let's, let's take a look at it. This is tough, man. I mean, we said we all have some brain farts, Shaq in the fool moments. He said he's mentally in his own head, and I feel like he's kind of had more than most this year. So yeah, I'm looking forward to him back. Back to back. Good. Run it back. See you guys next week. <laughs>